Welcome to Insight Builder channel. Python enthusiasts, programming experts and my dear friends. How to do warm up practice for Django framework. This video is going to introduce to you about the process and uh, the series of steps that you can take in order to warm up your uh, skill on Django Python framework. Before we understand we need to think why we are learning this why we are doing this so why will we do a warm-up think about any of the uh, exercises that you have learned till now whether it is a dance whether it is weightlifting whether it's even you know learning uh, music uh, singing whatever it is there is a way to warm up without warm-up you don't start doing the work even in case of uh, if you're doing any kind of uh, work that involves uh, even documentation in fact you do certain kinds of warm up you have some kind of a initial day start routine and then you start working on the actual challenge when you are trying to learn a particular framework in python there are so many frameworks in python and in order to keep the knowledge that you gather in a particular framework it's actually challenging and the frameworks the frameworks themselves do a lot of abstractions that is pretty challenging for anyone new to keep track so you have to take a particular framework for an example django in this case and you have to keep on practicing it until you master the basics but there is a set routine that you can follow and that routine is what i am going to discuss in this video this video is not a tutorial on or a how to on django projects no this is a tutorial this is a how to on warming up your practice on django framework so if you have thought excuse me we will be working on a kind of a project but we, it will not be a project that will actually give some kind of an output you will actually learn something totally different by the end of this uh, video and that is how to uh, come up with exercises of your own uh, uh, your own style and also keep track of uh, your your own uh, uh, skill level and also keep track of how you are doing when it comes to recollecting and uh, implementing certain logic uh, with django framework so this is what you will get out of this and the overview will be based on this warm-up task this will be the series of warm-up tasks that we will go through we will create the environment for uh, Django projects. We will uh, create the Django projects themselves. We will start working on the CRUD operations using the API calls. And for doing the API calls, we will be using the HTTP, HTTP I. That is a library called as HTTP IE. And uh, we will be using that library to connect and uh, do the API calls. We will not be using the browser. There is a reason for this the main idea of uh, uh, using the warm-up doing the warm-up is to keep your uh, uh, your interactions minimal meaning the steps that you take the actions that you are taking should be as controlled as possible so that your uh, your brain as well as your body gets the memory of the actions that you have taken in this way what will happen is next time when you are going to set up a project when you set up a project in django you will exactly remember not from your brain but from your uh, finger memory from your the way you set up the environment all these things will be memorized as a as a whole not not as a memory but as a entire process the movements that you made the activities that you did everything would have got memorized so that's the idea of this uh, uh, this way of you know doing the warm ups there are a couple of things that I would uh, suggest uh, in this case that is to keep the tables uh, predictable. The tables in the warm up that you are going to use, the database tables that is, has to be same. Why I am telling you to keep the names of these tables same is that is also related to the memory that uh, that we want to achieve. Once you keep, once you know that for a particular table that you did a particular kind of a, uh, columns, you gave those columns a particular kind of uh, uh, type that is data type, then those things will come first to you. And then 
you can actually start improvising from there and you can start referring to the documentation and it will be way more easier from there the warm up also will primarily work on cred process that is create read edit and delete process and we will be sending inputs and outputs so now that we have seen the overview what we are going to do next is we are going to dive directly into the warm up tasks so the warm up tasks are listed here it's a lot of tasks that you see here it's not one or two things we are going to do at least some 20 to 25 different steps from starting from creating the virtual environment and going up to a full blown uh, django api that can do a lot of stuff right we'll be trying to keep it as simple as possible there will be only two tables and uh, we will be having only one single app and one single project the project names as you can see here is already decided the project name will be recap the pro the app name will be reapp all these things will be updated in the settings by you and uh, we will be seeing that process how you are going to do that we will be also working on the tables we will be using two tables one is for the tasks and another another is for the owners initially the tasks and the owners will not be linked the table will not be linked with the foreign key after the basic cred activity is done then we you think about making the connectivity between both the create a relationship between both the tables once that is done once you are able to do all these processes uh, in sync without much of a delay then you redo it so that's the key aspect of it so you redo redo the entire warm up from top to bottom and you do it in a specific uh, timeline now you might be wondering that how is this different from uh, any of the courses or any of the practice sessions that is given by others okay the key aspect is that all the steps that you see is not hard and fast you don't need to maintain these same steps you don't need to maintain the same uh, same uh, project name or uh, the table name you can change it it's something it's in your hand and the first time when you are going to do it it's going to be as per this particular uh, steps but you are free to modify it and uh, also you are free to add more tasks in this warm up when i began this warm up had only four tasks believe me when i completed the django tutorial i was only concerned about four major uh, tasks uh, that is uh, create read edit and delete but then as i started uh, doing a lot of warm ups then and reading a lot of tutorials in the wild using rail python using uh, geeks for geeks uh, working with stack overflow doing some projects for the customers lot of things you keep learning and those tasks you can start adding that's one of the key aspects of this way of learning and doing warm up excuse me okay now that is out of the way we will start creating the environment i'll be using vs code and uh, most of the uh, things that i do will be done inside this uh, four corners so i'll be trying to keep it inside this four corners only and uh, i will try to see how to maintain the real estate of the screen so let me go into the terminal and you can see already that i have uh, the uh, terminal set up into split mode and uh, you see that already i have an environment this is an environment that i use for my warm up but what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to deactivate this environment and i'm going to create the environment one by one okay and here also i'm deactivating it this uh, warm up i am going to do it inside the git folders one of the folders that i have for all the uh, all the projects that i work and uh, keep track you can also do the same thing so i am going to do a cd dot dot but one suggestion when i have uh, when i when it comes to the the virtual environment creation is try to do it on the root of the drive because uh, the same the same uh, virtual environment will be used by multiple projects not just one project right and also the same virtual environment you can actually reuse it you can actually delete it so in this case i am going to if you go to the d drive uh, there will be lots of uh, let me do a dr star django projects so there will be uh, lots of uh, projects there will be lots of uh, details in uh, django projects the virtual environment that you create 
as you can see here so you can delete it and you can redo it also but in uh, my case i am going to just create a new virtual environment so let me start so i am going to say python m v n v and uh, my virtual environment is going to be warm up django straightforward right once i create the virtual environment using python m v n v django you need to follow certain steps in order to install the necessary libraries okay let us move to the next step we have to activate this uh, warm up uh, django environment so i am going to say warm up django scripts and activate i am using windows so i am using this particular uh, scripts activate uh, process in case of linux you will be using source and you will be going into that particular uh, virtual environment and you will be activating the uh, activate script let's move forward let us actually do one more important thing we can actually do python m pip install and upgrade pip first so in this way what will happen is you will not get that pesky error so let us do that so this will upgrade the pip first of all and uh, it will actually move from 23.2.1 to 24 so it is better to keep your pip updated and as you go forward you can get better uh, services from uh, pip so it will take a second I am pausing the video in the middle so that uh, I save time, but uh, it it will take a little more time in your case. So the pip twenty two twenty four point zero has been installed. Now I am going to do a pip install Django, and I am going to install HTTP HTT Py also. I am going to install both of these uh, libraries inside the virtual environment. I uh, you have to ensure that uh, whenever initially when i was uh, working with the virtual environment it was kind of a challenge to keep track that whether i am inside the virtual environment or not but as i started doing a lot of warm-up it becomes uh, second nature but before that yes it was a challenge so that is one one more advantage that you'll get and a uh, lot of these uh, supporting uh, libraries are getting installed right now after this what you will be doing is we will be starting to work on uh, the meat of the warm up that is creating the projects django projects and creating the application so you can move between these two um, what is it called terminals here the reason why i split it here right now is that uh, we will be using one terminal to run the server and the another terminal to send the request to the server so you'll be seeing that in a couple of minutes that is the reason why i have created both of these things here so as of now i am going to keep this uh, terminal small and later i will make this terminal small also <clears throat> that is also a reason why i keep this terminals this way most of the time when you are uh, trying to work with uh, the this kinds of frameworks right the server sends a lot of errors because you are making a lot of mistakes when you are doing the warm up the first time it takes a lot of uh, shifting between the windows and uh, it's pretty annoying sometimes and that's why i wanted you guys to follow a set of uh, the uh, the layout here and it can be much more easier for you let's uh, we can see that the django has been installed here and next thing that you need to ensure is that when you are going into the vs code to start the coding you need to connect to this particular interpreter that is warm up django interpreter so that uh, you are in the proper uh, virtual environment i will be showing you that also let's move forward what i'm going to do right now is i am going to start the project on the root of the root of this uh, d drive itself you don't need to uh, you can actually go into git folders you can actually create a separate folders like this and inside that you can create it and uh, do the warm up and later you can delete that folder because maybe once in a while uh, initially you will be doing the warm up for uh, 3 days once or 5 days once but after some time you are going to do it uh, maybe 15 days once this routine is something that you are going to control so there are a lot of things is in your hand but knowing that you have to do this is uh, knowing that you can control this is one of the most uh, you know interesting aspect of uh, doing warm ups like this let's uh, let me actually use git folders and if you see in my git folders there will be a lot of other uh, uh, repositories so let me start the project so in order to start the project we have to use django admin command you can do a django admin and uh, press a h here h key and uh, that is going to give you a lot of uh, available uh, 
subcommands of Django admin uh, command. And in that, there will be two things start app and start project. So we'll, we'll use the start project first. So the project that you're going to uh, right now start is uh, called as uh, recap. So Django admin start project recap. If in case there is a folder already available in your uh, in that uh, git folders uh, root folder, then it will throw an error. So ensure that you have deleted that uh, earlier warm up folder that you have. And once that recap folder or the project is created, go into the recap folder. And here you can run this Python manage.py start app and reapp. So here, this command that I'm using. So all these commands, I am not explaining anything. And as I already told you, this is not a Django how to tutorial. This is about, you know, warming up the Django project, right? And you can actually use this as a reference also because I am following a set of uh, uh, set of ordered steps in order to complete the same project uh, multiple times. You can use this as a reference whenever you are getting stuck somewhere in your uh, in your series of steps. You can actually come back here and take a look. That's one way. And the other way is that when you are doing a warm up and you want to know what to do next, at that time also you can use this. So two ways you can actually use this uh, resource. The application, the project has been clear, created and the app has been created. Both of these things, we can check it right now. You can do a DIR on the recap project folder. You will see that there is another one recap folder and uh, there is this app that we created called reapp. There is manage.py, that's it. So we have completed the first step. So what you have done is we have created virtual environment. We activated it. We did the installation. We created the recap and reapp uh, projects and applications and next what we need to do is we need to start working on the files so before we go and start working on the files we have to do a couple of stuff i'm going to close certain things and i'm going to add the uh, the new folders that we created to the explorer here is the VS Code uh, Explorer and you see that I have got already a lot of uh, folders here already listed under the tree, the folder tree. You can go to file and you can, uh, you can add the folder to workspace. I have added the recap folder or the project that we created just now and you can see that inside the recap folder I have the reapp folder as well as the recap uh, folder also and the manage.py so all these things are done next what you are going to do is we are going to update the settings file under the project so the project that we created is recap so you are going to go to settings.py once you are going to go to the settings.py it's good time that you can uh, set the interpreter so if you press ctrl shift p in uh, vs code you will get this kind of uh, options you can select the python interpreter from the workspace level and you go into find and then you can uh, go into d drive and you can select the environment just a minute so here i am inside the warm up django and you can go into scripts and you can select this python.exe and select the interpreter and now the interpreter has been fixed for your project why it's required uh, for you to do this because the pyland server that is going to uh, resolve the imports the library imports will have to look under this warm-up django folder and uh, the libraries that is installed in warm-up django folders are django http and the uh, rest of the related uh, libraries so it has to look there so that's why we are doing this next you uh, you can actually close this out and you can scroll down the first if you look at uh, the various uh, what is it called uh, tutorials you will see after this step there will be lots of uh, uh, additional steps that need to be done like done like allowed host you have to allow the host like you have to put the star here or you have to give the various uh, urls that you are going to allow but we are going to do a very simple thing we are just going to allow this app that's it we are going to add an installed app here 
and then you are going to give a comma the point here is that we are going to keep these modifications as simple as possible and we are going to do this again and again right as i as i always tell that rest of the things you done you can keep it uh, as it is you don't need to change it in the other tutorials you would have come across various other changes and if you want to implement those changes you have to first of all update that in the warm up task and then you should come here and implement that the warm up task is going to be kind of a, a reference or kind of a teacher to you who which is going to tell you that okay i should say it's more like a, a set of routine that you need to follow in order to achieve uh, the mastery so you need to set these things ahead of time so that's one of the things that uh, you need to constantly keep track right now we have updated the settings dot five file and also we have updated the interpreter you can right now exit the settings dot five and next we need to create urls dot five files in the app and uh, you need to update the urls dot pi file in the project along with the path why we are doing this because uh, we have to start the server and in order for the server to start we need to have the application linked with the project so we need to do this and for that we are going to go into the explorer again we are going to go into the just a second into re app uh, sorry in we are going to go into recap we are going to go into urls and if you scroll down you are going to call path and in order to include the application you are going to uh, call the include function so this these are the steps that you need to do you might be wondering that if if i can uh, if i am able to do this uh, without even referring to anything then most of the stuff will be much more easier right so i am going to say include and i am going to say reapp dot urls so this is what i am going to do and the reapp that i am giving here you can actually change it also if you want to keep it something small you can uh, make it as root or if you want to say ra whichever names that you like you can provide so keep it as small as possible but keep it same that's the key aspect do not modify this on every warm up the key idea here is that the more the things are constant in this uh, set of uh, uh, steps you follow better your brain will recollect fine i have modified this urls and in case of uh, the application reapp there is no urls file by default so you have to create that file so let me go create a new file i will say urls.py without that if i don't create this file then this url path will error out by default think about it right i am telling to the django project that there is an application and inside that application there is a file called as urls this is what i am telling by this particular line even though you may not know you might have you know started django for the first time you may not know this but this is what this line tells and steadily when you start doing warm up you will start understanding this thing in the beginning if you don't get it it's all right you will learn it steadily apart from this we don't need to create any other files as of now next what we need to do is we have to create a view that can uh, that can actually start that can show that server is up and running so for that what we are going to do is we are going to just a minute we are going to go into the views uh, file so let us do that go to views there will be mainly three files that you'll be working upon that is urls views and models these are the three files so keep all these three files open so in that way you don't need to keep on toggling between the Uh, the explorer and the main working window so i have kept everything open here so i have models.py i have views.py and i have urls.py and this urls is from recap and this okay both uh, this is from reapp so this is from recap and this is from reapp so you can see that dot here so this is recap folder inside that reapp this is recap folder inside that recap so you can close this this is no no longer required only you need it for reference so why i am telling that you will need it for reference what happens is uh, there are these imports one of the major challenges that we face is these imports we keeping uh, 
the functions and the classes that you need in uh, in uh, for a particular uh, activity is one of the major challenges in python there are so many things that is already implemented inside the uh, inside the modules inside the libraries but uh, how will you keep track of all these things you will see that a lot of uh, experienced uh, developers can uh, you know start typing it and even in case of vs code you will get the auto completion you have lots of uh, ai related tools that can even write complete uh, code for you but the point here is that you will not be able to understand what the code is doing if you don't understand what path is doing what include is doing that's the key aspect if you don't understand it then you are going to be in deep trouble and even if you if an artificial intelligence model is going to give you the code you will not be able to execute it properly it will execute obviously but it will not solve your problem because that code that whichever the model is giving you might have some kind of error because uh, the inputs might be a little bit different which you will not be able to catch so these things are some of the benefits that you will get as you start warming up fine so let us keep this url patterns here and let us go to the urls for the app so you will see it's blank so what we will need so we will need something which is similar to urls.py that's similar that is something that you should remember after you complete uh, the django tutorials you will know that urls.py inside the project and urls.py inside the application are same but has some differences and that is going to be uh, shown right now so import django okay i am going to say from import right i need to import couple of things so from django dot urls import path this is the this is the only import that we will do in urls and we are going to create url patterns and this url patterns is going to be a list and inside the list we are going to have the various path that we create and uh, and the first path that we create is going to be the root path we are not going to do anything and the the function that we are going to call from the views is going to be hello and the name that you are going to give is also hello right now you can see that immediately there is a red mark telling that undefined hello so i need to first of all do from use import hello we already know that that there is no such uh, function inside the views right there is no such function so if i execute this it will fail the idea here is that you have to first of all fix this you have to first of all you know fix this particular uh, setup and then you can actually go to the views now that urls is fixed and you have done the import let us go to the views.py and again views.py has something already built in for you so it is saying from django shortcuts import render the render function is used mainly for rendering the output onto a html page using the jinja template but we already decided that we are not going to use this right we are not going to render it to the uh, front end right so we need is http response and also we might actually need a couple of more shortcuts so that is get list for our 404 and also we might uh, need uh, redirect yeah we will re need re redirect also these things we will use it and you will uh, you will see that uh, why we need these things as as the need comes i will explain it but now the http response is the type of response that we are going to send in the beginning for the hello function so next let us go down and start defining the hello function so we are going to define the hello function and this hello function is by default going to have a request parameter this is one of the major confusion that most of the newcomers to django or the web development frameworks in python will have that why and from where this request is coming the request is coming from the web server and uh, the request okay the request is coming to the web server from the web uh, page or from the user and this request is by default uh, processed by the uh, django server right this particular file gets processed by default so the mechanism of how the request parameter comes and sits inside this area is not something that i am going to touch you don't need to worry about that also but you need to know that request it comes from the user 
all i'm going to do is i'm going to say print and uh, i'm going to say it works and i'm going to send a response most important point is you have to return a response you cannot just say return and uh, give a variable it will not work you have to send a response that is actually a response object then only the web server can read it and then it can process it because the input and output is going to be from the uh, from and to the web server only not to this particular script so these are the things or ideas will come will become uh, clarified as you start doing warm up but i'm explaining these things as uh, as we go forward so that uh, you will also understand that okay so these are the benefits of doing warm up in the response what i'm going to say is i'm just going to say uh, the server is up and this server is up is going to be directly placed onto the web page or to the any of the application that is actually requesting for the response let us uh, complete this and now with this so i have not touched the models.py so there is no requirement of models.py you will see that uh, in order to complete most of this steps up to uh, yeah up to this uh, step you will see that was thinking of creating a video that provides the above endpoints and include the database so after doing all this uh, steps almost 10 to 12 steps of warm up then i decided of creating the video and then i told uh, let the above endpoints be connecting to the database so database is not required and uh, you'll see a lot of experiment we can do without the database itself so let us go up back so now you don't need this urls you can close this but keep this in mind it is going to be ra slash this is required when you are going to connect to the server let me close this and i have the views and i am going to close the models also i have the urls these are the two things that we will be diving uh, right now into i am going to start the server in this location i am going to say python manage dot py and run server that's the server that i am starting and the server comes up in this location i am going to work there is a error that has come up immediately so it is saying that you have 18 unapplied migrations so i need to apply the migrations so in order to apply the migrations i can use this location you don't need to really you know stop the server so once the server has started you don't need to stop it so that's why i split this area right so you can uh, go into recap and uh, important point is you have to start the warm up you have to activate the warm up django environment that's very important and then once you are inside there you can use python uh, manage.py and you can say migrate so that will do the migration for you even though the server is up and running it doesn't matter uh, you if you have this kind of a session to double session you can do it by default next we have to check whether this particular route is working or not and whether we can get this output that the server is up for that we are going to use the http uh, http library so we have already installed that in the warm up django environment so if i run this command if i run H http and if i say get so this is a get request by default and i am going to give the uh, http uh, what is it called address 127.0.0.1 so i am getting this address from here and the port is 8000 and i need to go to this ra slash this is very important if i don't do that then it will not work because my urls path starts from ra slash as you already saw the application uh, root is at ra so that's why i need to do, do this and i am going to press enter once you do that you will see that the if the connection gets through if the connection gets through then uh, i will uh, get the okay so there is an error here because i have used a wrong uh, port name i will have to use 8000 so let us do 8000 right now and if the connection the server is up so you can see the output the server is up and also you can see the various uh, let me actually make it a little bit bigger and you can see that http command that we used this http command is part of http library 
so you have to install it then only this will work by default if you try to run it in your command prompt it will not i hope you guys can follow my mouse you can see the http response is 200 okay and all these parts that you see here right this has come from the http response this particular uh, response that you create here it has come along with this object so that's how all these things got placed here you can see the date you can see the kind of uh, content type the length everything has been you know sent through this response but not just this and uh, this is the final text output or the content that has been placed on the output uh, just to you know uh, to make you guys comfortable i will be showing the output in the uh, in the chrome browser in a second so you can see that i reached out to the same uh, address the localhost 8000 address and uh, the server is up data is shown here also well we have the first step or the first process out of our way so we have got the server up and running next what we are going to do is we have to practice the various ways of uh, uh, doing get and doing put or post to the server for that you can actually doing a post or doing a get is uh, not very different why i'm saying it's not very different because whatever kind of uh, call you are making or whatever kind of request you are making it's going to come and hit a particular python function inside the inside your application or inside your server and that python function is only going to process it right so if you are doing a post it doesn't mean that that post has to be placed inside a database or the data has to go into the database you can still test it and you can give back the response uh, through various ways after you read the post response so that's why i told you that you don't need a database connectivity to begin with later once you are comfortable with uh, the get the put the post and the delete from the function level then you can actually connect with the database and you can start uh, processing it that will be much more easier and much more streamlined if you are getting stuck in this level itself where you are calling the function and uh, trying to process it obviously it is going to be difficult when you are going to go to the database and start connecting with it it's going to be difficult right if there is some kind of an error fine uh, with that out of the way next step with that we need to do is we need to do a simple get uh, the simple get that we have done next we are going to do a simple get with the query parameter so the whenever you are going to send a query parameter you should be able to process that query parameter so for that you have to create a new function so from now on what we will do is we will first of all try to write the function inside the views and then update that function to the path inside the urls that is all you need to do that is the flow that happens between uh, the in the warm up so views url update it run the command through http uh, command uh, in the command prompt and check it so that's the routine that we will follow so in the views i am going to create a definition function definition i am going to say get name i am going to get the name through query parameters and uh, the way the query parameters works in case of uh, uh, in case of uh, in case of django is a little bit different so let me first of all check whether i am getting a get uh, request so if i say request dot get so that will tell me whether i am getting a get request and then only if i am getting a get request then i am going to ask that return http response and i am going to ask it to return the response that return the request that i am getting so request the name is request dot get dot name so the get name the query parameter is going to be inside the get request so that is how it will be if you want you can actually do a print of the uh, get request also if you do a request like this and if you print it out you will see what is happening and if it doesn't work so if there is a, a improper way of get request then you can say return http response 
and here i can say there was an error i am not going to say what kind of error it is or anything i am just writing some information because this is not a full blown project it's uh, it's kind of a warm up that i am doing you can give any kind of information here it's uh, it's not a hard and fast rule we have set up this and now i have to import this get name of function into urls so that is going to be a long list of functions that you are going to import i am going to say get name and uh, i am going to here create the path right now so i am going to create a path gn so that's the get name and i am going to use a function get name here and i am going to use the name gn here that's it it's uh, it's pretty simple right and once this update is done you can see that the server has uh, started there is no any error you can go here in the place where we are trying to get the name in case of http http there are a couple of shortcuts that you can use so instead of uh, giving uh, http http 127 0.0.1 you can actually you know only give 8000 and follow with the uh, url path so you can remove all these things and you can just give colon 8000 you can say ra gm and then you can give the query parameters in case of the query parameters you have to give it with double equal to so that's how it works in http you have to give it with double equal to and you have to say first query first query so that's the name that i'm going to give and i'm going to press enter and if all is well and you'll see that the output is the name is first query and apart from that you will also see that in the server side that the query dict is what is coming in this is one of the benefits right i am actually sending the query here in this area and i can directly see the output here i am not at all shifting the shifting or doing alt shift uh, tab or any of those commands to look at the output it's right there this is one of the greatest benefits of uh, you know having this layout and we can see that uh, the uh, the response is through 200 is the output so it has worked we have done the basic uh, query parameters and what if i need to have multiple query parameters that's the next thing so we are going to work with next is multiple query parameters so we are going to define before that let us go to the warm up task and let us see what is the next step okay uh, we have to work with the idx first basically we have to give the index of something that you are going to collect from the url and then we are going to go to multiple query parameters so what we are going to do is we are going to define get idx just a second sorry about that def get idx so most of the functions that i am creating it's very similar has the names that are very similar to the actions or the uh, objectives that you are having why i am doing this is it's it makes the life of uh, keeping track uh, of names way more easier so that's the only reason and uh, here i am going to print the index this print is going to print the data inside the server excuse me so the index is sorry about the typo index is idx and uh, i am going to send the response back so return http response the received received index s idx you'll see that uh, it's pretty straightforward and uh, it has not got much of a code right but why this is important you will realize it in a couple of minutes so as we go forward and start using these indexes for uh, retrieving the tasks retrieving the owner then you will know Acha, this is the reason why we are practicing with index first so we are going to do a get idx we have got it so we are going here and we are going to import it get idx and uh, then we are going to use that get idx here you see the 
GIDX and uh, GIDX. Not difficult, right? Once you have this kind of pattern, it becomes way more easier and uh, predictable. So I can remove, I am not going to modify much of this right now. So I need to modify this path. So instead of GN, I need to have GIDX here. You can see that I am modifying in this location right now and I am going to give zero. That is the first index Python way. And once I execute this, you will see there are two things. So first and foremost that it is saying GIDX is not found. Why is that? And second thing, there is a huge uh, data of HTML that is getting uh, posted here. So whenever there is an error in uh, Django, that is in the uh, in the browser, you will see there is a lot of information placed on the browser window if the debug is on. So basically here it's saying 404 error. It is saying it's not able to find the uh, path. The reason is uh, the reason could be as simple as uh, not actually having the index here. So in order to have the index, I need to provide this kind of a syntax where I say int idx. This is the index that I am expecting in this location. So I need to tell the server ahead of time that you will actually get such an input. I have not done that uh, input, uh, done that uh, pattern here. That's why you are getting this error. So now I am going to rerun this uh, same command. Not, not much changed except this particular step. And you will see that the index is 0. The received index is zero, so both the outputs have come, and uh, the the HTTP response is 200. The error that you saw when I got it for the first time, it I had to actually you know do a lot of uh, document document reference. I have to go to Google and I have to review why this error came. Yeah, even though I've done the Django tutorials, still I had forgot that okay, this is the reason. Every time, even you can ask uh, your AI model, but Having that in your own mind is something uh, which is much more powerful and it will keep you uh, continuing the exercise. It will uh, avoid, you, uh, avoid you to stop doing the exercise because you are actually shifting, right? Your context shifting from your VS code to Google Chrome or to the AI uh, model, which can be completely avoided. Now we have done this process. Now we are going to do multiple query multiple query parameters so for that we will go back here and we will define a new function so we are going to say multi params right and uh, in this case i am going to only get the request the query parameters are going to come in the request dot get right so i am going to say request dot if request dot get basically i am checking whether i am getting a request uh, get request and if that is the case then Actually, I can do one more thing. I can uh, do checking. I'm for an example. I'm going to ask for the name in request dot get. So I can check this whether there is a name in request dot get, and there is an age in request dot get. So both of these things I can first ask to be checked in request.get right only if this is there then i can ask the server to go to the next step so here i am going to again return the response i am going to say http response and uh, the response is going to be the request is from uh, request dot get dot uh, name so this is the person who has sent the request with the uh, age of with age of <clears throat> i can give the request uh, data you can actually collect this into a variable and you can use that also. But uh, here I am not uh, going through that process of collecting it and placing it. I am doing it directly. Age. 
so if such a name and age is not provided then we are going to return a http response telling that uh, such a error, uh, such a information was not provided so the request has some info missing now we have set it, set this up so we have to go to the urls go back import multi params we have imported the multi params that we set up right now create a path i am going to say mp you can say mul param a little more descriptive is okay i don't see a missed, uh, issue there mul param and i am going to use mul multi params and i am going to say mul param mul param so the setup has been done so for multiple parameters we have already done the setup right now in the urls as well as in the views so next what we have to do is go to the a place where you are writing the command so this time again we are still in the get i can do http uh, we can say get and i can uh, call the 8000 slash i am going to say ra malparam mul param and when i am going to give multiple parameters here you have to use name equal to new super let us say super and age equal to 25 so i need to give both the parameters here if i don't give then that is going to be error you'll you'll see that in a couple of minutes so one of the major challenges okay that is also one more issue that i am facing here that it is saying mul param is not found so why is that why i am not able to find it out because i have missed the slash here so let me modify that right now and uh, let me execute this so these kinds of small small errors that you will face in the uh, you will face in the uh, what is it called uh, warm up is acceptable but the point is that once you make a mistake you immediately know what kind of mistakes you have made initially you might actually struggle but after some 10 or 15 times of uh, this warm up i am 100 percent sure that you'll you'll uh, you know get the mistake immediately now you can see the request is from super with the age of 25 so you saw the output directly coming out and also if you want you can actually print it out but in our case we have not printed out the request so that's why you do not see anything here in the server we can actually break this right now if i don't give the age and if i execute this particular uh, path url path you will see that uh, the reply is saying the request has some info missing so basically the age is missing here so this particular path did not execute okay since there is no age in the request.get it did not raise an error or else what will happen is this particular uh, condition will not be there it will go into this area and this will error out telling that the age attribute is not there or age key is not there here you will still see we are getting a proper 200 response because we are returning an http response with the proper reply right so these are the things that you can you know keep track of let us go go to the warm up tasks now we have done up to this so we have done almost all the get request types right a simple get a get with the query parameters get with index i mean on the url itself modifying the uh, using multiple query parameters single and multiple next what we are going to do is we are going to start working with post post is where a lot of challenges will occur one of the major challenges that i was facing is that how to get the post request through command prompt uh, that's when i came across http uh, library itself and uh, after even i got access to http the challenge was that how to send the post request to the django server because in case of uh, http we have a different syntax for uh, the way we send the form updates and also the way we send the query parameters it's very similar right so this is query parameters uh, syntax and this is form syntax there is only one equal to less right and here it's f post if you do, if you don't give f post then this will error out it will not work so you will see these things in case of put 
the syntax is still the same but you are not having the form here so these are you know kind of slight modifications that you will steadily learn the details are important right coming across these details and you know making these details go into your brain is also a very different kind of a challenge so only way that uh, you can make your brain to tune to these details is by practice excuse me we will code the post with idx alone in this uh, discussion and then uh, for the rest of the post put and uh, delete and further discussion will be done in the next video so let's go to the views let's uh, we can actually copy this not very different we are going to do that because you will see that uh, there is couple of changes that you are going to make but it's not uh, much of a logical change first thing is we need to import the crf csrf import uh, csrf exempt decorator so for that we need to go to the top and you need to call from django and you need to go into the uh, conf and you need to ask for just a second i had uh, forgot the import path so in case of csrf exempt i had to import from views decorators but when i tried to do that i went into contrib so which was wrong so i need to go into views decorators csrf and then import csrf exempt whenever you are facing this kind of you know memory loss it's always better to go back and refer to the earlier tutorials that you have already done it's not a mistake or it's not wrong the point here is that you should be ready to accept that you have forgot it and you need to immediately rectify that and also understand what is a mistake or what kind of uh, uh, you know uh, reason why you forgot it so the idea here is that you need to <clears throat> just a second so here i need to keep track of the various modules that is getting involved here so we are going to work with views so we are in the views uh, script and we are trying to work with uh, the decorator and uh, the decorator type is csrf so we need to keep this path in our mind how to do that by keeping track of things that you know or that is there in front of you we have use file in front of us we need the csrf exempt uh, decorator and we know that it's a decorator of csrf type so all these things are present here so pretty straightforward right but when you forget it these things has to uh, you know come to you from your uh, from your mind you should not actually force it it has to come fluently so these things uh, come through time and uh, process only so let us go back to the bottom and uh, let us start executing it so here we are going to do a post right the difference is not going to be very different uh, difference is not going to be much from the get uh, post so this is index is post received post idx i'm just modifying these things just to you know show you that how it is different once i have done this post idx uh, view creation i'm going to close the earlier one go to urls and here i have to first of all import the post idx right and uh, once i import it i need to also create the path so i am saying pidx pidx and i am going to remove this and post idx pidx very fast right and then go here into the area where you are going to get the data get the do the calls and uh, pidx and in this case there is one major mistake that i have done first thing that i have done is in the views i have actually created the idx uh, variable here but in the urls i did not create this kind of a tag so i need to create this kind of a tag first i need to create the tag how did i know this because i had made the mistake in get idx so that's how i remember it and i went back now i have modified it i go to zero and here there is one more mistake that i have made the mistake that i have made is first thing is that i have actually told get okay 
I am asking for a get, but I am actually sending this particular pidx path, and it still worked. So it is saying received post idx is zero. Why it is working? I am actually trying to create a post write post idx, but the function does not care that whether it is a post or a get. Only when you are going to send the data in certain other formats, the CSR of exempt will come into picture because you are going to send it through a form or something related to it or else the csr of exempt is also not going to do anything and the post idx whether it is post or get it doesn't matter it's going to get this idx and it's going to process it so does it mean that if i actually send it as instead of get if i do a post it is still going to work let us see and uh, in a second it will actually execute and you will see that it's not very different you will see that it is still receiving the post idx but the uh, it is getting the response post idx but here you can see the request has come as post so that's the point sometimes all it matters is the function that is getting called in case of django it does not mat matter whether you are sending it as a post or whether it you are sending it as a get so i believe that in this discussion you excuse me so you must have already got an idea of uh, how to you know start doing the warm up and what kind of things that you need to keep in track in mind and uh, you know how to do the setup how to get the layout set how to get the environment set ahead of time all these things that uh, we have reviewed in this video will be super helpful try to follow this and uh, provide your feedback and comment in the description uh, below and also the code and uh, the supporting documents will be shared with you guys over the github repo so you can take a look you can keep it as a backup and you can refer it if you get stuck in your warm ups and uh, stay tuned for the next video where we will continue this uh, series of uh, 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 series of call uh, views create views function creation and also the calls that we did through http commands so with that said see you guys have a great time do warm up do warm up bye